and literature, cinema, music, or art to speak about cutting edge research in these fields or a Middle Eastern author, translator, artist, filmmaker, or musician to read, discuss, perform, or exhibit recent works. The series encourages interdisciplinarity and comparative inquiry to highlight the diversity and dynamism of cultural and theoretical cross currents, influences, and new developments in Middle Eastern cultures. Before introducing our speakers today, I'd like to thank the co-sponsoring units at the University of Texas at Austin that have helped to support this event, the Center for and Department of Middle Eastern Studies, the Schusterman Center for Jewish Studies, the Plan to Honors Program, the Department of Arts and Entertainment Technologies at the School of Design and Creative uh, Technologies, the Department of Theater and Dance, and finally, outside of UT, the Office of Cultural Affairs of the Consulate General of Israel to the Southwest. Now for our participants. Our moderator, Yulia Lanina, is an assistant professor of practice at the Department of Arts and Entertainment Technologies at the University of Texas at Austin. She's also an interdisciplinary artist whose work bridges traditional media with new technologies. She creates alternate realities in her works, ones based on sexuality, trauma, and identity. She was a Fulbright US scholar in Vienna and has been honored by the Headlands Art Center and the Yado Fellowship, among others. She's exhibited her work in Korea, Japan, China, Germany, and Russia, as well as domestically in the US. Uh, and our uh, guest, guests today are Karen Farago, who lives on Kibbutz Ma'ayan Tzvi in Israel, where she has her studio. A graduate of the Holon Institute of Technology in 2002 with a de degree in industrial design and art, she also trained independently in sewing, stitching, and imagery. She currently focuses on creating specialized drawings on a background of various prefabricated materials, discarded books, old maps and embroidery patterns and fabrics enhance the meaning and beauty of the text or patterns onto which she sketches fauna, flora, and evocative figures. Ashkan Oayai was born in Tehran, Iran, and currently resides in Houston, Texas. He graduated from the Middle East Technical University in Ankara, Turkey in 2009 with a degree in biology of all things. As a self-taught photographer, he has been professionally active since 2008. His current photography project is Bodies in Motion within Greater Houston, primarily with ballet dancers. The dance photography collaboration allows for a deeper engagement with both arts, allowing for the capture and amplification of a single moment within the flow of movement. So that uh, concludes my part in this uh, in, in the presentation. I will just ask uh, on a pragmatic note that everyone as as much as is possible, keep video on so we kind of cultivate a sense of of being together in a in a shared space instead of squ screens, uh, little squares on a zoom screen. Um, and also uh, to, to keep muted until the Q and a so that there isn't any background noise um, uh, disturbing the conversation. Thank you very much uh, for joining us and let's get started, Yulia. Yeah, welcome everyone. And thank you so much for inviting me to uh, moderate this amazing conversation. So I wanted to first ask the artists um, a bit about their work and what inspires you um, and motivates you. So maybe you can tell us a little bit. Can you start? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you all for having me us first. Uh, this is this is so exciting to be here. Uh, University of Texas is one of my favorite places in this country. It's one of the first places actually I visited when I uh, landed in US 10 years ago. Uh, what has inspired us? Uh, my inspiration usually comes from the beauty of the movement. Uh, is something actually as a born raised Iranian it was not part of what we grew up with. So we didn't have a fact of freedom of dance or music in a public area. Uh, as Karen said, uh, university was, uh, college years was in Turkey. It's still in Turkey was a little bit more modern, but not as much as you can have the freedom here in the US. So when I moved here, the first thing that was inspiring me was the movement a dancer can 
provide uh, the lines and the freedoms in their shapes and everything. So I find to capturing a dancer is actually capturing something that I always was lacking probably in my uh, entire childhood and life or college years and everything. So when I start to capturing them, that was something start being my inspiration. And I find them the symbol of the free soul and the peace. And that's my inspiration to how I'm doing my art and how I started actually. Um, my, in, first of all, thank you very much for having me. I'm a little bit excited and thank you all for coming, for sharing your time with us. Um, and my main inspiration, I think, is the language. I'm in love with the Hebrew language and I just started collecting old books, torn books that were just thrown away, almost in the garbage. And it connects me to my roots. Uh, this old, uh, old language, and I'm also fascinated by this uh, by this amazing uh, language that we that each word has double meaning. Uh, even the meeting with uh, with Ashkan, as uh, as we say in Hebrew, we say there is no nothing happened just by chance. The word chance mikre, if you change the letters, is also karma. And there are more meanings for that. And so every time I see an old uh, book, I just take it and I feel a part of it. But it's part of my history. It's part of what I love. And there's another thing uh, that leads me that I try uh, to feel one with whatever I do. So if it's, for example, with text, then I read the text. And the text leads me to, to the thing I want to, to do with it in my art. And that's what leads me to the, the image I will choose on Ashkan's gallery, for example. Uh, I'll give you another ex example, example of uh, feeling one with something. Uh, I started swimming in the open sea instead of the swimming pool. And then when I'm in the water, I try to feel like I'm, I am part of the, I am water. I'm not telling myself that I'm, that the water are touching me. I, I try to feel one with the water. I'm looking at the fish while I'm swimming and I feel like I'm just part of them. It's not like me as a visitor looking at the fish. One love, one, just like Bob Marley said, <laughs> one. It helps me, it helps me in the, uh, in the way I paint also, and it's working, I think. <laughs> Thank you, that's wonderful. Um, which, you know, brings us into your collaboration, right? So maybe um, you can tell us yes. a bit about how it started. Um, okay. What, you know, the process. Uh, and yes. Um, uh, First of all, I didn't know, of course, uh, that, he's, uh, that he came from Iran. I just uh, loved his uh, gallery. And as I said before, maybe there is no something that happens just by chance. Uh, so I just uh, loved his, uh, his art. And I love dancing. I used to dance uh, all my life. And up until three years ago, I, I also I danced flamenco, not in a professional way, just like uh, his dancers, just as a hobby. Uh, it was a, my dream as a child, and so I just uh, followed his art. I loved it, and uh, I started uh, um, making like um, using my background, my Hebrew background, with his images, and uh, we encouraged each, each other. He wrote me that he likes it, and I wrote him that I love his uh, art. And then one time he told me, you know what, it's, it's much more than this because uh, I'm an Iranian and you are Israeli. And it's like, let's make this bridge uh, work together. And immediately we thought about uh, an exhibition together. We just didn't know when and how. Uh, we thought it's going to be even in Turkey, by the way, because he told me his, his story. And... Uh, 
right after he told me that he is uh, from Iran, I was so surprised and I, and I said, wow, give me your phone now. And immediately we just moved to a WhatsApp video phone and we just talked uh, like, well, like, like old friends, right, Ashkan, am I right? <laughs> The, uh, the part of the collaboration that um, inspired and it's helping us to moving on and make an exhibition of it. Well, as again, comes with the, the news and the part of the media that is covering from what, what I'm, where am I coming from or what is Israel is doing. The mentality of everybody around here is not very positive about who we are and where we are coming from. Uh, once we got this option, I thought this is a good, at least a little bit from my own part, I can make some changes with this collaboration to show that we can look at the Iranians and Israeli citizens in a more positive way, uh, that there are artists coming from those cultures. There are artists that they can work with each other. They are people that they can understand peace and not haterism, uh, although, what I grew up with is all against this. What the system is growing you up in those countries, especially Iran or Syria, all of those, the in education is just start, go against whoever is coming, Ashkenazis or Jewish, all those. I mean, all, when you come to the free country here, then you understand how you can not go what they taught you for and go against it. You do your best to show your part and actually advertise it that all oh, we are free and this is a free word we don't have to do it we can be a little bit more friendly our art should actually with our art we are trying to do that at least as on my side i'm trying to exhibit uh, karen's pieces in my studio as much as possible you see it behind me um, uh, then i call i combine it with the farsi calligraphy so there are hebrews there are farsis there are Israeli dancers, there are Lebanese dancers on the wall. So the, the whole message and the collaboration here is that we are all in one page with this and the freedom of it, what you call it, the negative part of it can go away and we can all be in one lasting peace between each other, maybe. That's a goal. Well, that's wonderful. So, you know, we're talking about art. It would be nice to see some images. So maybe you can share um, your work with us and maybe talk about okay. it as you showing us the work. Um, I can share. Sure. It's okay. Yeah, yeah I see it's okay. <laughs> so I can start with this one because this is one of the most, a lot of people might not know what's going on. So Karen is so kind to pick up my pieces and put them in her own art. So the dancer that you're seeing at the center, her name is Natalie Warnham. She's a soloist with Houston Ballet. I took this picture 2007 in the middle of the street in Houston. Uh, it's a beautiful shot. And actually I have something very close to that on top of the over corners, almost same dancer, same pose in yeah. different options that over there is a botanic. Now she can continue about talking about her piece. I just wanted to, maybe some people don't know how we are collaborating. This is a collaboration. Thank you, Ashka. And actually, I loved this gesture that she made and you took the photo of it, that I, I think I made uh, not a uh, full uh, uh, painting, but I made so many sketches of this image, really, because I enjoyed it. She's like uh, asking for um, like a, a beginning of prey. That's what I feel when, when I'm watching this image. And I start here with this uh, painting. I can explain a little bit, a little bit of, uh, about the way I start. I start with text in the background, uh, whatever I find. In uh, religious books are not uh, ending in the garbage because they have a solution. It's called in Hebrew, Gniza. But I find and use only secular books. Uh, and sometimes I do have things from the Bible, but it's only with explanations and not the holy uh, books. And in this painting also there is um, uh, embroidery, which um, from my side, I, I, I feel like it's like bringing back the, the old text and bringing back uh, to life the old, um, 
the old um, feminine uh, thing like embroidery. I'll show you another one. And you do embroidery, embroidery yourself, right? What? You do embroidery yourself? Yes. And there's another thing happened uh, uh, while they were uh, not only myself, mostly myself, but uh, uh, during the, um, the lockdowns, my old neighbors saw, uh, saw my art and they saw me coming home from my studio. I, I, I live only like seven minutes by walk uh, from my studio and I used to take uh, some walk with me to, to walk on, only uh, on the embroidery alone at home. And they saw it and uh, some of them asked to join me and it became like uh, a love story. And still there is one old lady uh, she's still uh, doing it with me, um, and she's the, she's an expert. In the beginning, I was so nervous about letting my art uh, uh, doing it with another person because usually when I walk here in my studio, I lock the door because I want to be on my own. But uh, in the beginning, I just thought I'm doing a, a favor because she's all alone in the lockdowns and so on. But it just uh, it's turned out to be a love story. She's walking with me and she's happy with, I'm happy because she's an expert. She's ma, she has lots uh, of experience with this, um, with all kinds of embroidery. This one I can show you, uh, just the other side, you can see that it's, it's embroidered into the canvas. That's the same one, yes, I'm just showing it in my uh, screen. Let's talk about another one. Uh, it's just a detail from a big uh, painting. Uh, so only if you can read Hebrew. <laughs> I'm using also, you see this one is a window. Just like I collect books, I collect uh, all the furniture and things that were made here in the kibbutz. This window or drawers, mm -hmm. I, I paint, or there is one drawer in, uh, behind the Ashkan. It was all made by the carpenter of the kibbutz here. And it's also something that like I'm saving and giving him a new life, just like the old uh, text. Uh, here, for example, also it, there is an embroidery, the black line around her is embroidery. Uh, and of course, uh, black ink and so on. And the, the poem in the middle, it's in Hebrew, of course, uh, talks about new beginning and new year and, and this gesture that she makes with the hand uh, is so delicate that Ashkan uh, made with flowers in the original uh, uh, photo. Also with tulip, just like on the side here, if you recognize it, Ashkan. <laughs> and uh, it's it was like, uh, for me, it was like she's asking for a new uh, um, year to start in a good way. Let's see another one. Uh, this is an example of um, how I start. I just, I found one, so one poem, uh, a love song, and uh, by Rachel. Uh, in the minute I, I start to make like kind of a collage in the background, all, all the other pages are coming to it. I don't feel like I'm looking for it. They are coming to me. And then I'm looking at Ashkan's gallery and I paint above what connects me to the text. It was a love song, therefore I know that I will uh, paint one of his uh, beautiful couples. This is a big uh, picture. And again, here with embroidery, I have it here next to me. <laughs> the painting just fell. Here it's the same. Uh, here, for example, I found uh, with notes, this is a very old page, with notes and a Hebrew song that talks about finding water in the desert. And then I found Ashkan's, first of all, I'm excited about, it was printed, printed in here and, and so on, and in Hebrew and lyrics and notes. 
And then I found this uh, beautiful dancer that Ashkan took, and she's like asking for water in the desert. And that was the reason I found the connection between the songs. And I try between the lines not to cover if there is a, a, a beautiful uh, lyrics or, or, or the date. I try, if you can see here, I try not to erase it with the, with the black ink. Again, here, for example, I try not to, to cover with black ink uh, the places I want people to be able to read. See here? And here is an example of um, there are letters with, uh, with energy. It's a long explanation. I try to make it short. But uh, this meaning of the uh, these three letters, uh, the meaning is if you watch them, you get connected to, to, to spiritual uh, life and spiritual uh, inner decision that you can take. And that's why I chose, first of all, I made the embroidery. And, and second, I chose uh, one of Ashkan's uh, a dancer that uh, the look in her eyes were, is connected to the subject of those three letters. This is also a drawer that was made uh, here in the kibbutz. I collected it <laughs> next to the garbage. It's, it's from the 50s, beautiful wood. And uh, the background is from Songs of Song um, with an with, uh, explanation. And it's a love song, of course. That's why I was painting this beautiful couple. Here again, it's embroidery and uh, it talks about friendship. That's why I chose those beautiful dancers. The original uh, photo of, uh, of Ashkan here is uh, amazing. I hope you can share it with, with us. Here is another embroidery. Um, and here you can see from, uh, it's like it's the details. So you can see how I keep the notes, and I, how I try to keep the notes and not to cover them with ink or with the, with the embroidery. The same with blessing. Okay, I have more, but I think it's enough. <laughs> Thank you, that was great. And maybe um, Ashkan, you can share your work since that uh, served as an inspiration. So we can get an idea. You have my screen? Yeah. Very good. Okay, um, I just put together a few of my favorite pieces from the day that we start collaborating with Karen. So we will talk about what this collaboration did to us, but I'll kind of want to point at it. Once we start doing this, I start advertising, actually, I would like to work with the dancers in the U.S. that they are even from Israel, anywhere from Middle East, basically, or Cuba and Venezuelan, because they are kind of sharing the same story that we have, at least with some problems with the government that they have to leave. So the three pictures that you see on the top that I'm going to focus on, this is... Um, Idan actually is here. I saw his name. Idan mm -hmm. is a person initially start the flame here. I mean, not being very good friend. He's in Israel. Hi, Idan. Thank you for everything you did. Idan uh, put together, uh, connect me to the uh, choreographer that I, unfortunately, I don't remember his name right now at this moment. He's based in California. He's very famous in Israel. So he put this piece together. So we were. Oh, Idan Tadmo. Right? Okay, here you go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we invited dancers to my studio. Dancers are Americans, but this piece was choreographed by this gentleman that I was amazed by. Uh, I did photography him too. So this is a few of the pictures that we did for uh, this group, and I really love it. Mainly on my pieces, if you pay attention, there is somebody getting empowered about, and usually it's a woman that's 
comes with the freedom and the, uh, what you call it, the emotion and the beauty and the free soul the dancer is providing. I'm trying to push on it as much as possible in my pieces. So this is actually two pieces we, we couldn't throw apart that much. So it's two separate pictures we did, we put it together. So basically there's a, a crowd of the artists that empowering one single woman to show the power. Here is another one that we put actually somehow a military clothing on them. Again, everybody is uh, supporting one female artist out of the crowd. Moving on, this is my own choreography. I mean, not choreography, subject came by myself. We start painting our artists. So we add more texture on our pictures as we continue. A lot of hair and makeup involved, the pieces of the hair mask to cover in the face to not give in the story, but still there is some story behind those masks as well. Uh, this is keep going. I'm doing a lot of body paint with the dancers that being invited in town. But uh, uh, some of the pictures like this, what I'm trying to use is nudity, but in more tasteful uh, way. And again, trying to empower a female in my pictures as much as I can because of my background again, where we're coming from, women don't have a voice. So here I'm trying to a little bit push it forward with what I'm doing. This piece was actually uh, a choreographed by himself with the, um, with the fabric and everything. Is something actually I got inspired by Karen pictures to add more texture of the yellow on my pictures moving forward. This dancer that we invited in, she's from Lebanon. Um, what we did here, we tried to show her in our completing a white collar, which is a piece, a symbol, a symbol of the piece and the fabrics and the movement. Again, uh, with, I'm inspired mostly, but the way that they move and that what they provide. Uh, this artist is, from Israel, her name is uh, Alexandra Farbri. We did the same thing, we invited her over here. We paint her all the way in the white and she was very open to the idea that later we add some calligraphy on her that I'm going to show it to you after this and finish it uh, from my art. So after doing everything with Karen and everything, this is my most recent work that I'm really proud of. Uh, what we did here, we uh, combined modern Farsi poems with the color of the Israeli flag over an Israeli dancer that she is painted in white. And that's a very, uh, if you have been in Iran or Syria or countries like a Jordan, you will see this color in a lot of mosques. That's a very traditional Islamic colors that it comes to the art that is added. And the poem is actually is coming from one of the modern, uh, poem from uh, poem Farsis, because it's not Persian anymore. Uh, they call it modern uh, Farsi poems by Nima Yushich. Uh, when you go to my uh, website and my Instagram, there is a very long uh, explanation from this. So what Karen did inspired me to do more collaboration and add more texture to my own photography and being open to stepping out of my own box and slowly adding more texture to my photography to turn it into more artistic way and bringing my own background to it like exactly what she's doing with her art. I have a lot here to show, but the one of the most interesting thing that I'm recently doing, I'm adding more of my own culture in it, covering them all the way that how they are uh, forcing women in Iran doing it, completely in a hijab and still doing the movement. Uh, and finally some, uh, they call this term, uh, some fabric coming from my beautiful country. We put the dress together here and she's Armenian dancer. She got invited to my studio. So we add in multiple backgrounds in one picture. Those hair is very famous in Armenian, uh, Armenian uh, folk dance. Uh, beside the term is very famous in Iranian uh, texture, uh, textile and the movement of the dance and everything. So all together we are trying to represent the backgrounds, the people, the freedom, the peace, the 
well, however you want to call it. So that's how the, everything in the collaboration between us, between the pictures and the pieces are keep going. And we are continuing it. We are not going to stop. We did two shows so far. We did a show here in Houston, which was around uh, 40 days, 30 days. We had another show in Israel. Again, thanks to Edan and Raoult. There's two people that were really helpful for our shows, the Israeli consulate. And moving on, we are trying to take this to California and these pieces are available in my studio. So if you all ever come into Houston, we are at Sawyer Yards. I have Karen's pieces here, I have my own pieces. You see it behind me. You're always more than welcome to come check them out in person. Karen pieces in person is completely different. I can tell you the texture that she has on these pieces, it's extraordinary. There's a lot of artists, painters, my pieces, they are very uh, kind to me, but Karen's is something else. You can see it in it. There is, there is a lot into it. When you get into it, there's a lot to read. There is a lot to understand. There is a lot to touch. It's, it's a beautiful piece. And I definitely recommend everyone to check your pieces. They're so strong. Thank you. Scott. Yeah, and so, you know, you mentioned, Ashkan, how, you know, your work actually is changing as a result of your collaboration. Karen, do you feel the same way? Does your work um, I mean, I know the you know you you were motivated by the um, photographs, but do you feel that things are changing as a result of working together? Yes, yes. Um, I talked to Ashken about it in the beginning. I told him, you know what, you are. Uh, I I can feel that your your work is changing, and I want to use only the basic uh, photo shoot like. If there is one dancer or without the fabric, that the, the last uh, things that he showed now with the unique uh, fabric or the unique movement, I just wanted to use the simple uh, pictures so I can add my own uh, say. Uh, that's one thing. And then uh, he explained uh, to me about some of the pictures that are combined. There is a Muslim dancer together with a Russian dancer. He told me about the couples he made in, in, uh, in the photo shoot. It's also uh, affected my work because I chose different text for the background. And then uh, it was interesting that while I was adding the embroidery, he was adding, we didn't talk about it, I just show, uh, saw his uh, gallery on Instagram. He started adding all the Persian uh, fabrics and the traditional things that he brought from home. And um, the movement affects me, uh, that's for sure. In, in the beginning, I used to paint only birds. Yeah. Uh, I was inspired by, the, by this uh, amazing uh, animal, and uh, I do have some uh, uh, big uh, windows here, and I see the birds all the time. It's a, it's a specific place where uh, for wandering uh, birds in, in the country, in the area, in the whole area, in, the all, in all the Middle East, actually. And I, uh, my studio was full of birds, and then when I started to, the, to do this collaboration with Ashkan, I started to add much more movement. Even though I danced all my life, it wasn't um, something that I, I had, maybe it, I, I needed a kind of a trigger because I was looking for my art uh, when I was 18. And then I saw that I was painting uh, dancers as, as well. Like in, hi, in high school, uh, my last project was uh, dancers and it's like, uh, coming back home now when I'm doing this collab with uh, Ashkan. There's a funny fact <laughs> that we never point at. Karen and I never met in person. Yeah. It's been always uh, <laughs> this problem that she's there, I'm here. Uh, there is a problem that, I mean, even is a COVID or I'm an Iranian, I cannot enter to US, I mean, to Israel. If I enter, I might not be able to come back or blah, blah, all the above. So we even did a show to beat out each other. So we sent each other art, but we never had the pleasure to meet each other in person yet. Yeah, people visit at my studio and I talk about our art and they ask me if I met him. Every time uh, people ask me if I met Ashkan, I, I have to think about it for a minute because I feel like I already met him. And I say, no, actually, 
Actually, uh, we met only on WhatsApp web. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you mentioned, right, people coming into your studio and you had a few shows. So what was the response you feel from the shows? And, you, you know, you want to have more of them. So what, what do you feel people are coming out with or the questions that they ask for you? Well, the question is normally is like your first question, how we got motivated or how we met or how everything started. Those are the first question, how you start working with each other, which is funny. It was over Instagram. Thank you to Instagram, <laughs> the publicity of it. The second is uh, people love the pieces that we are doing together the most. Uh, have a feeling combining multiple uh, media is always much more stronger than having one media on your art. That's what I'm learning from my audience. When they come to the studio, first thing get their attention is a wall behind me. There's three more walls in the uh, gallery. I mean, the rest is not getting attention as what is behind me right now. That's actually what is encouraging us to make more. Yes. Yeah, I can tell about the exhibition in Israel. Um, which was, uh, it was beautiful, first of all. It, uh, it was with a great uh, creature work that combined our art next to each other. There was a story between each, uh, uh, each uh, work of art and there was also a text talking about uh, each uh, picture. And uh, people were so excited about this, um, about this meeting, about this collab, because uh, there is a thing, it's a story, uh, uh, Persian uh, people, Iranian people in Israel, uh, we don't feel like enemies, uh, it's only a politic uh, thing, and uh, they were so excited with, uh, with this connection. And, and another thing, there's uh, many Israelis uh, that were born in uh, in Iran and they still speak uh, Persian and they were excited about it. Uh, I got lots of good uh, and warm words uh, from people who came to visit. That's true. There is a lot of there is a lot of Iranian uh, Jewish or Ashkenazis around the uh, around the world to uh, when they see such a thing going on, it touch home for them too. And they really love it to see the both culture coming in one art because Karen uh, kindly is doing some pieces that actually is from the book in Hebrew about Iran. And those are my favorites too. So she puts pages about Tehran, Isfahan or Shiraz or the wine coming from Shiraz. Shiraz is pretty known for their wine or anything that is related to the both culture. When you put them both together, uh, a lot of people have both backgrounds when they see it and, and probably haven't happened yet before or is very rare, it's, uh, it's, it's very meaningful when they see that. Yes, I, in, uh, I just told you that I collect books that was just thrown away next to the garbage. And in the minute he told me that he's Iranian, I started finding, uh, actually, I didn't notice that uh, till then, but I started finding books about Iran, atlas of the Persian, when the Persian were in Israel um, hundreds of years ago, and um, a Persian dictionary. I, I suddenly found a beautiful book of the Persian garden, gardening. Uh, and and I used it as a, as a background. Till then, I never I never found a, a Persian book or or history book about the Persian uh, uh, connection to to Israel or the occupation in Jerusalem or the Koresh uh, declaration and things like that. Only since he told me. So the things are, if I'm uh, now I'm connected to the first thing I said that I want to be just part of something. I'm trying to be just part of my painting. So even just a channel to those things, those things coming uh, at me. I wasn't looking for those books. It just suddenly I started uh, uh, finding them. Thank you. Well, I wanted to um, give our audience an opportunity to ask questions. Um, so, 
If anybody has, a, I see there's a chat. Let's see if there's anything here. Oh, they're just high. So feel free to speak them up or type them into the chat. B? Yes, hi. Thank you. I'm sorry I cannot be on camera. My name is Bita Razavi. And thank you so much for presenting your work. I have a couple of questions. I ask both of them and then you can maybe take turns to answer or in however order that you want to. One is specifically, I guess, for Ashton on um, um, when you talked about your inspiration and that your part of your inspiration for your art is movement. Um, was, is that, um, like, were you exposed to any movement in terms of dancing or ballet or anything like that growing up in Iran, or is that all after you had left, um, and when you were basically as an adult? I was curious about that one. And then my next question, I guess it's a clarifying question, because I didn't catch, um, this when you were talking about collaborating. I'm curious, how does that happen in two different countries? Like, do you do half of the work and then send it off to the next person, to the other person? I didn't catch that first. So if you can explain that, elaborate on it, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Hi, Vita. Uh, the, it uh, goes to my dad. Uh, so we had the opportunity to grow up in a different country as one was in the Iran, Iraq, where we were in Swiss, and before that, there were multiple times going to Europe and coming back. My dad was collecting ballerinas' statues. Wow. We had a lot of them in the house, and we still have them. And my father is an amazing self taught painter, and he always painted nude. So I grew up in it, in the house. He's still painting and it's amazing. He's, he's never went after it. My brother is really encouraging him right now that he should actually, after they saw my pieces go viral, that he should put his pieces out too. Uh, yeah, my dad, it comes from the house that I grew up with. Thanks to them, they were not modest. They were, they were, um, they were partially educated. Uh, they were traveling, so I had at home a lot of ballerinas and statues that we still have at my parents' house here in Texas. That's come, the lines and movement comes a little bit from the back of my head in home. But uh, I guess I had that, you don't burn artists, I guess somehow, or you burn artists, I don't know, for my part, was something that was pleasing my eyes all the time, the movement. When I saw it in you as some dance photographer are doing it, it really encouraged me to do it too. And I wanted to do that. I was, I, before that in Istanbul, I was doing just uh, casting photography. That was my thing, just portrait. But for an art, I thought this can be moved to pieces and has an opportunity to move forward with. Karen, do you want to answer the second one? Uh, the second one, I'm just, uh, look, we are using the internet, so I'm just uh, watching his uh, art. Once he, in the beginning, he asked me, do you want me to send you a specific picture or, and I said, no, I just, whatever comes into my eyes, whatever jump into my eyes in your uh, gallery, just a simple gallery in his uh, Instagram uh, profile, that's all. And I'm just uh, looking at this picture. I don't even need to print it or something yet, because everything I do is on my old pages that I find. I don't print it and then making the embroidery into the picture. I'm just oh. printing it with black ink uh, on those uh, old books that I find. Yeah, Bita, we are not sending each other anything. Uh, mostly is Miss Karen. She is getting inspired from the pieces that I have already, and she paint them on the paper. That's how the collaboration is going, if that answers your question. Yes, thank you for explaining. Yeah, welcome. Thank you. Uh, Nahid has a question now. Yes, hi, thank you very much. Can you hear me? Because I've never really yes. spoken. Yes, okay, great. Thank you so much for your beautiful art, um, both of you, and for your beautiful collaboration. Um, my question is, um, I, I wonder if my question is moot, because Ashkan, have you spent any time living in Iran, actually, or 
Yes, you have. Okay. So of course the stage tries to sort of, you know, um, present a whole different public space, as you mentioned in your introduction, than what is actually happening in the private spaces, right? And so in the private spaces, of course, as somebody who grew up in Iran, um, you know, some of my foremost memories are just of dancing and just lots of dancing, right? Lots of music, lots of dancing. That's just so inherently part of Persian culture and Persian life. And so, you know, as a scholar who's interested in authoritarianism and censorship and how that can really sort of create um, different kinds of detachment um, and attachment to authoritarian discourse and effect, I'm just curious, once you left the country and, you know, rebelled uh, clearly to the public discourse by not just choosing the subject of dance, which is one of the most sensitive issues, and I think we see that in the you know woman life freedom movement how dance all of a sudden breaks into the public space from these private and social media and online spaces um and also collaboration with an israeli artist right so you're rebelling against two sort of core elements of that public um uh, propaganda sort of the disposed uh, the imposed discourse so i'm just curious when you then decided to choose dancers if you if you could provide some self reflection or self introspection um would you say that sort of, you know, imposition of this authoritarian discourse and censorship had worked to such an, um, uh, you know, dis such an effect that you chose, you did detach from it by choosing dance, but um, your attachment to the private space perhaps had already been somehow, you know, manipulated with in this, in this discourse of censorship. And so you didn't choose Iranian dancers, which, you know, in your later work, you have one of sort of this Armenian dancer with the um, with the Persian fabric, but you chose sort of a Western form, Western dancers. And so if you can just sort of give me some reflection on what you think that kind of, you know, process of censorship and authoritarianism may have done to your art and the representations that you've chosen. I hope that's not too complicated a question. Thank you. It, it's a sensitive. Uh, uh matter actually what you're pointing at what we start the conversation with uh yeah I, I i was born and raised in iran 16 years of my life is still i spend the most of my life in iran than any other country that i leave that i've been in turkey for 11 years after that and i've been in the us for 10 years and i have two years in between in swiss so uh true we have a private section that we go to party and we see the dance is all Iranians. We just dance, 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 because that's the only place we can relieve. We can have, we feel free and not that much. You still have that, uh, what you call it, you have that feeling that you might get in trouble. Uh, selecting the Western dancer reason is because I don't have any Iranian available to invite or get it. There is one Iranian dancer in Canada. There's one Iranian dancer in California that I know of. I'm sure there's more Iranian dancers that I haven't had a chance to talk to. There are some half Iranians, half others that we are getting invited to the studio. I haven't had a chance to work with any of it. Hopefully that I can get some to come to Houston, come to my studio and be interested to work with me. But definitely if I get it, now, absolutely, I will be very loud about it. I'll work with it. But you know, Armenian, Iranian, Israelis, Lebanese, Jordanians, we are all in the same picture right now that we are struggling with the same problems. So any of them that I can invite to my studio, they are more than welcome to come to. I start to make the art with them. And don't forget, a lot of our Iranians are very modest and it's so hard to work with them because they won't want to expose what they are representing or having problems to going back home because it's very obvious what I'm doing right now. So those are a little bit limiting me. Um, I can add something uh, here, Nahid, that I, I, I think, I hope I'm not uh, making any troubles, Ashkan, because I think maybe in the first phone call that we had, Ashkan told me, you know, one of my, we already had a, a, a good connection, I, I must add, yes. And he said, well, I have a, a dream. I want to go back to Tehran to do this art. In the beginning, he was uh, making photo shoot in the streets of Houston, right? The dancer yes. in the open street, streets in like an urbanic uh, view. And he told me, uh, my dream is to do it in Tehran, in the streets of Tehran with ballet dancers. And when I heard this, I was, I was, uh, I was worried. I told him, Ashkan, Please don't worry me. I'm also a Jewish mother. 
I don't want to to worry about it. It's like two uh, forbidden uh, things to do, but that was his dream. Yeah, if any day, hopefully the movements go through and we will be more free to travel to Iran easier and we have dance as a free movement in our country, definitely that would be my first thing to do. I will travel and I will take some pictures in Iran for sure. <laughs> Thank you. We have a question here if uh, somebody from the audience is interested in connecting with you, would it be possible for them? to? Sure, I, I, can add, I can put the address of the gallery in Houston. Sure, I, I feel free to, to write to me uh, my email. I'll, I'll, I'll just leave the email here. And I have uh, what um, Instagram profile and uh, Facebook, whatever you want, you can feel free to talk to me. This is the gallery apartments in Houston and my social media, you can find me easily on my name and last name. I have two social media. One is more modest, one is not that modest. So here you go. Uh, this is my fine art and I'm adding the other one that we find each other on. Here you go. So thank you. Well, we have, um, oh, Karen, yes, question. Um, if somebody else has a question they'd like to ask first, then I can I can wait or forego my turn. I don't want to. No other hands up right now. Okay, so I, I um, thank you. This was wonderful too. I know we've been planning this event first in person and then virtual for a really long time. So I'm just really glad we 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 made it. Um, we managed to do it, and I loved seeing the art and hearing you talk about it. It seems to me, sort of hearing you both talk about your art together and showing the art that there's this really interesting um, sort of interplay between text and texture and textile in everything that you're doing. And um, and I'm, I'm interested, I mean, I would be interested in hearing a little more about how those, those three elements are coming together in your work, but I think I'm especially interested in hearing a little bit more about the text. And Kellen, you mentioned that in, that for you, um, your use of text, it comes partly out of your love for the Hebrew language, uh, but you're both using text in really, really fascinating ways. And I wonder if you could say a little bit more because there's so much happening. Um, there's such an interesting engagement for Ashkan with, well, for both of you with movement and text and, right? I mean, the text is, it seems to be performing a lot of functions here. And if let, let me just narrow this down by asking if you could say something about how, how you see text working with what you're doing in your art. Uh, first of all, I, I, some of the books I find, uh, they were printed in Hebrew, but uh, in other countries, I have books uh, which are 200 years ago or printed in Germany in Hebrew or in Tunisia, or I have like a treasure. My, my library is a, is a treasure. It's not only what's written in it, uh, it's also where it was printed. So I take the connection of the location as well, not only the meaning of the words. And I'm also, me adding the embroidery, I, I, um, I look at it as, is almost like uh, touching the text because it's it's also kind of a tradition. It's a traditional thing, and also I have stories from my 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 grandma. She just passed away in, in last August, uh, but she was a, a Holocaust survivor, and all her stories were about how uh, about how embroidery uh, saved her life. She used to tell me things about. Uh, everything she was asked to do, she said she can. She had a great hand, a golden hand. She knew how to do everything. And uh, those stories are with me when I'm collecting text as a background, when I'm adding, uh, when I'm using my hands. I know that uh, it used to give life to people. I can show it just, I don't have a picture in my, uh, but this is her. <laughs> she used to, let me take some pictures of her and uh, to use it for my paintings. For me, um, it's all about the line and movement again. Uh, Farsi calligraphy is one of the most 
interesting art uh, version for me. Um, to be able to add it on my pictures, I believe is adding more movement to my already the frozen move of the dancer. And the colors, because the calligraphy on Farsi, it's an Arabic alphabet, but it is Farsi. The way that it goes narrow and goes uh, deeper in the lines and goes all over the dancer to hug them, that's what I found in a text plus the dancer. It's very, uh, it's hitting close to the home, basically. Uh, that's, I believe that's my home run, actually. I did it, this is what I'm gonna saddle on and I'm gonna create as much as possible with the Iranian artists. I cannot do calligraphy myself. I'm inviting other Iranian artists to collaborate with me to put, because calligraphy, it's very deep, is a years of experience. So to put their calligraphy over my pictures, but we talk about the colors, we talk about the poems that we are picking, uh, it has to be related to what we are moving on. So that's how my text start uh, getting into it. I was actually, again, inspired by her text on the pictures. And once a few artists, Iranian artists, uh, uh, attended and say, hey, what if we try your pieces with calligraphy? Say, you know what, I want, I want a trademark on that. I really want it for myself. So let's do it together. I don't want this to go because again, it's very close to home. It's my home run. I wanted to own it. So we are doing it. And we are hoping very soon we have a large exhibition out of just calligraphy and dancers together. And if we can have it actually move together it would be even better. I, I see a question in the, in the messenger, so I, I would like to answer because it's a good one. Uh, Esther asks, Karen, how do you feel about pulling or tearing pages out of the book? It's a great... Uh, really? <laughs> yeah, because we were raised uh, 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 about not touching the book, not even taking it out of the house. It was like something that... Uh, and most of the books I found have stamp, belong to family, Cohen, for example, and then the, so the book will not be forgotten in a, another house. So I had in the beginning some kind of ideology that I'm collecting only torn books without the cover or only the beautiful cover without the book. And really, I find so many books. It's it's uh, in the beginning it was said. Uh, to find uh, this amount of books. But um, during, during the, the last years, I, I decided maybe to let go of this ideology because everything is just going uh, to the trash, it's, it's sad to say. So I really, I, still, I cannot pull uh, from a good book, even though if he's like 200, 170 years old, I really cannot tone it. Uh, but I do find enough books that are already torn, that were already forgotten in the rain, especially now in the winter. <laughs> and it's really, it's, it's too easy to find, especially maybe it's, in, maybe it's because I live in a kibbutz, the department was very uh, small and uh, people didn't have at home uh, things like a washing machine or television or so, uh, uh, some of the houses had only only books and uh, music records and things like that. So when um, uh, uh, some when people moved from a, a house to another, they took out uh, uh, the only thing that were in the house, which are some drawers, wood drawers, and uh, books. Maybe that's the reason I saw so many books in the streets here. Well, thank you so much. I think oops, we are at time, right? Yeah. So, yeah, so we have all of the information here. If you want to contact the artists, follow them on Instagram or visit the gallery. Everything is available in the chat. Um, and I want to thank again everyone for joining us. And um, I don't know, Karen, would you like to? I, I would I, like to. Yeah. I would like to, to thank uh, the Schusterman Center and uh, the West Coast uh, Consulate and, and uh, Reut Bonfil, who was so helpful. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, Idan Schwartz, 
uh, which is uh, it, not working there anymore, but he was like the first uh, hope because I called him and said, what do you say? What do you say? I can I tell you a story. I met an uh, Iranian uh, uh, American that he's from Iran, a uh, photographer. And uh, you think, what do you think about the story? And he, and he told me, are you kidding me? This is the kind of story, this is the kind of bridge that we are looking for, uh, like a bridge for art. And he, he gave us the, the hope. And thank you, Yuli Alanina. It's a great honor for you, uh, for me to talk to you here. And Karen Grunberg, Karen Marcia, thank you so much for all those uh, things you made for this talk. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Akshan. Thank you, Karen. And Karen um, Grandberg, would you like to? I just wanted to thank everyone for spending their uh, their hour with us, wherever you are in the world. Thank you for joining us. Um, it really is inspiring to to hear Karen and Ashkan talk about their work and to have Yulia moderating. We appreciate your joining us and. Um, yeah, and hopefully we'll see many more great things coming out of this collaboration. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much. Should we stop the recording? Okay, I was recording separately too. Sorry that I need to. I, 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 I heard it too. <laughs> I'm